Hello and welcome um, to Coding Culture. So, I, I start with with a story. So I went went um, out with with the organizers yesterday, and we said, actually, wouldn't it be fun if every speaker gets a beer and drink on stage? That makes the talk much much more funny, much better. So look at what I got here. Thank you, J Prime, for the beer, and you tell me afterwards if the talk was fun for you. So let's see if that experiment works. It's not Bulgarian? No. Oh, it's Czech beer. Anyway, so what we do actually as software developers day in, day out, I mean, we care about our code quality. We want, want to make our code better. We discuss in the team how we can improve our, our code, how we can actually make the product better so the customer can have a better experience. So day in, day out, we think about our products, which is good. We should. But what we tend to forget is how we do things. So how do we work together? How do we, how do we speak together? How do, we, how, do, how, how do we actually work together? So we tend to forget this. So this is about the, the culture, our culture that we have. Um, and you, you, might, you might say, Sven, all things that you say, so this is my safe harbor slide. Um, so you might think, Sven, all the things you say, that's profane. That's so obvious. Companies should do that. Yes, maybe, but sometimes it is also important to get reminded what is really important for us as a, as a team, what counts really for us as a team, what, what do we have to look after. And also, I will speak about being transparent and also respect each other, and these things go hand in hand. I mean, we cannot be transparent and don't respect each other, that will not, not work very well. Um, so. Take this as, as my profanity slide here. Like, like every speaker that um, does a talk, that want to talk about something, they, they, they look it up at, at Wikipedia. So I also wanted to see, what, what does Wikipedia say about what is culture? And if you read this, there's an, an article on Wikipedia about organizational culture, and if you read that article, it says something about Organizational culture is about our visions, our values, our norms, systems, symbols, language, assumptions, beliefs, and habits. So, after you read this long article, you have about culture maybe this in mind. You have no freaking clue again what culture is. I mean, it's like this here. What is that? Is that a, a, a rabbit? Yeah, is it a rabbit? Yeah? I kind of really see that. So, culture is, is the same thing. It's, it's, it's this fluffy thing that you cannot really, really touch. So, first thing that I try to explain you what culture is, I failed, sorry about that. So let's, let's, let's try, a try a second approach here. A culture that makes the developer happy. We all want to be happy at work, don't we? So, what makes us happy? Beer on tap at work. In the office. Or ping pong and free food. Woo! Great. Going to the, to the fridge, take your food, it's all free. Good. This is our San Francisco office. Or what does developers also love is Nerf guns. Shooting around with Nerf guns and these things are, these, these, uh, things are lying around all in the, in the Atlassian office. Great. Great culture, isn't it? Well, said that is, maybe this is cool stuff, but it has nothing to do with culture. Your culture can still be bad. Um, so. Second try to explain you what culture is, I failed again. So let's, let's try this one here, a bad culture. We all know, we have a feeling when we work in a bad culture, something is wrong here. We, we feel that, actually. So I was actually, before I worked for Atlassian, I was working in, an, in, an, uh, in a team, we are doing web software, and there was another team that was doing embedded software, and these software had to speak together. Um, I found a bug in the embedded software, and then I said, I raised a Jira issue, saying, hey, there's a bug, okay, good. And then it, it returns to me with, won't fix. So I said, w w w why? Why is that? Why, why won't you fix it? So, and then I talked to my manager, talked to the manager of the embedded team, talked to the team. We had a meeting after two weeks talking about this, and then they said, okay, yeah, we will. It's not really a bug, but anyway, we will fix that. So. We, actually, I, I got it fixed after one month. It's a kind of a, 
a, a bad feeling, and then you have this bad feeling about this kind of a culture if, the, if you have this. I mean, I, if, if I would have had the code of the embedded, of the embedded code, I could have fixed the bug immediately and, and make it happen. So why is this actually doing? Why are companies actually still doing that? I think we can blame him here. It's his fault. Who is that? Frederick Winslow Taylor. So famous for his Taylorism. Beginning of last, the last uh, century, um, he came up with efficient workers. So we need efficient workers on the assembly line. So it looks like this. And efficient workers just have to put stuff together. So they just put stuff together. They don't have to think. Actually, Henry Ford once said, I don't want my workers to think. They should just put stuff together. And it was okay for that time because you have to have a predictable output at the end of the assembly line. You have to know that you can produce, I don't know, 60 televisions a day or, or, or four, 500 cars a day or whatever. Um, so you, 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 needed, you needed these efficient workers that you can treat like machines. But actually, there has to be some people that have to think, actually. And these people, they invented them, they called them the managers. So that the managers are supposed to think. They have to put together the assembly line. So they, they are thinking for the people. Sounds familiar? Yeah. In some companies, we, we, we still have that. Times have up, but times have changed. Why, why that? Because work has actually changed. We are not putting stuff together anymore without thinking. We are, we are knowledge workers. We have to use our brains to come up with new ideas. And also, people have changed. We don't want to be that people that just go to work at, at uh, 7 or 8 and come back at 5 and say, yeah, that was a great day. We want to see the change. We want to see our own, we want to, want to see our own ideas come to life. Companies? Change slowly. I can see a slow, slowly change here, but um, it, it, takes, it, it will take time. So to sum this up, actually, in the past we were a little bit working like, like here, Fred Flintstone. It's uh, 5 p.m., the horn blows, yabba dabba doo, down the band dinosaur, home to Wilma. Now we're working a little bit more like the Incredibles. Yeah, there's something, an important project that has to be done. Yeah, okay, I stay, stay a little bit late, later for one week, and then I take, take some time off the next week. So, um, and I'm, I'm happy that I can work for a company that is, is working like this and it's called Atlassian. Who knows Atlassian here? Oh, most of you, good, okay. So we are, we are doing products like Jira, or Confluence, and Bitbucket. Um, and I work there as an evangelist, traveling around, drinking beer. And we're a bunch of cool guys, so this is, uh, we don't dress up like this all the time. It's our Halloween party. Um, so for one day, we dressed up like this. And I started with Atlassian four years ago when we were 300 people. And now we are 1,700, so we've grown a lot. And of, of course, the culture has changed. I mean, this is a picture from now. Now we don't dress up like this also. So this is just, just our, um, it's, instead of uh, having casual Fridays, we have sometimes formal Fridays. So where we really dress up like this. Um, but we, we are, we're kind of a fun company. So let's start with culture, culture of innovation. Innovation is, is, is very important. Why that? Because it's, it goes like this. Innovate or, or die. You have to put innovation into your product. Otherwise, your competitor will overtake you. You have to put new ideas in so, so you keep your customers happy. So how are companies actually doing that? How do, they, how do they motivate their people? They can say, yeah, so we have this value, innovate. So go and innovate. That doesn't, doesn't really work. So what, what they're doing is, hey, I give you 500 bucks for innovative idea. So submit your innovative idea. And we have this idea committee that uh, looks at it and says, oh, it's a good idea or it's a bad idea. Um, that doesn't work either. But how do you motivate these people here, these kind of, kind of geeks, to, to come up with new ideas, to come up with innovative ideas for the product? There's a very, very... It's, it's actually very easy to do that. Just give them time. You just need to give them some time because we are actually we're looking for sprint goals all the time and we have to, do, uh, have to please the customer, but we don't have time to come up with great ideas. We have time to come up with great ideas, but to work on great ideas. So it's time to try your ideas. And that's what we're doing at Atlassian. So we, every quarter we come together, the whole company comes together, and we're doing a, a ship it day. 
So this is the whole company, marketing, finance, development, all come together, take one day off and, and hack for 24 hours or do some stuff for 24 hours. So a ship a day starts with, with some brainstorming before the ship a day where we, where we sum up ideas. Um, if you don't have a great innovative idea that you want to work on, you can sum up in a team. So you do that and then you hack for 24 hours. So Thursday, 3 p.m., everyone is just hacking for, for 24 hours. Some people sleep at the office. Some people, most people go home at, at 11 and come back at 6. Um, and then at the end, and this is the important, uh, important thing, we show, we, uh, I mean the aim of a ship a day is to ship something. And then we show our innovative idea to the whole company. And that's, that's a great moment. If you have had this idea and you really worked hard on it for 24 hours and then you show it to the company and everyone is applauding you, so this is great. And then we vote for the winner. And if people vote for your, for your crazy idea, you, you really feel awesome. Um, so, for example, we have this hip chat uh, where we can chat and some, somebody came up with having uh, automatic translation. So if you log in in a different language, it's autom automatically translate your message to, to, to the other language. So you can, you can type in in your language and the people see that in... Probably will never ship that in the product, um, but it's a great idea and people tried that, it was very easy to do, so people tried that out. So what you get out of a ship it day is, a, is actually just a working prototype. That is not really polished for the product, it's, 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 it's just a prototype. For example, we recently shipped um, inline comments in Confluence, so you can highlight uh, text in Confluence and then put a comment directly to the text. And it took us four ship it days to come up with an, with an idea how to, how to realize that, that was not just a hack, that was really working. So the, the fourth time we said, okay, this is how we can do it. And we got this, we shipped this actually to customers uh, recently. But I think the most important thing is more that you get happy developers. It, really, working on, this is the, actually the reason why I became a developer, working on my own stuff, on my ideas, that makes me, that makes me totally happy. And ship it days are kind of innovation for the masses. So not just, not just for, for an innovation team or something. Really, everyone can have a great idea because ideas happen to, to, to everyone at, at any time. You can have a great idea under the shower and try to work on it. And, and you can have a great idea during the workout. I mean, great ideas don't happen normally to me when I sit in front of my screen and, and, and doing stuff. I saying, think, oh, now I have to have a great idea. It happens just, just like this. I say, oh, this is a good idea, so I work on it. So innovation happens. We know that. Um, but we just have to give it the possibility to grow and give it, give it some time to try out your crazy ideas. And happiness is, is, is actually very important also for us, us. Um, culture of happiness. What are companies doing to, to make you happy? Um, they're doing some, some, some events, so some summer party or something where they invite the whole company, maybe also your, your family, you come together and uh, actually talk to other, other people in the company that you don't have relationships to. Uh, we do the same thing, family and friends day, then uh, we do some team building, you probably also do that, so where you go river rafting or mountain climbing or something together, and it, it, it helps you to learn about the strengths and weaknesses of your team, and then we're doing something like end of fiscal year parties, uh, it's, it's always a another theme that we have, and we, we put together teams from, from different parts of the, of the company, uh, and then we, we, we do some crazy games, and this, this year it was Games of Code. Um, so, fun with co co-workers, what, what does it do? Uh, it helps us actually to build relationships also outside of our, our normal team, and it helps also to learn about the strengths and weaknesses about our team members. So, that's great. But these things may, may just happen actually um, just maybe once a year, maybe you do it twice a year or something. So what are we doing actually on a daily basis? Yes, we're sprinting. We are we're agile, of course, so we're, we're, we're sprinting all the time. And what are we doing at the end of the sprint? We're doing a retrospective. So we're looking back, what went good, what didn't went good, what should we improve for the next, next sprint? And then we go, on to the next sprint, and look back and improve, and go on to the next sprint, and go on to the next sprint, and try to fulfill our sprint goals. Well, 
I think there's something, something wrong in here. There's something missing. Um, actually, my favorite movie comes from the 80s, and it's called Ferris Bueller's Day Off. And Ferris says actually a, a very important sentence in that, in that movie. And he says, life moves pretty fast. If you, if you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. And that's so true. And we should do that more in software development too. You should say, stop. What did we do, actually? What did we achieve? What? It's great that we ship this, this feature or this software. We should stop and celebrate our team wins. We, we, we do awesome stuff, so stop and celebrate. So you can organize a release party. Um, just if you have your release, organize a party. Or do a team offsite and say, hey, yeah, great, we, we, we shipped this release, we're doing, we're doing an offsite here, and after the offsite, we, we're looking at the next release. Or if you don't get so much support, maybe from your management or something, just bake a cake, invite your stakeholders, and say, hey, great, this is the 3.1 cake, and uh, it's, it's look, look at what, what we achieved. And this is, this is, this is cool. But said that is we as software developers are very privileged. We really create something that we can be proud of. So we really have something to show, and the customer says, yeah, great. Not every team at Alaska can say that. For example, we have uh, the service team. And the service team can say, hey, yeah, 100 support tickets this week. Ooh, awesome. I'm not so great. But our service team, I mean, 100 support tickets may be great, I don't know. But um, it's, it's, it's not really a goal that we say, oh, we achieved that. Um, but our service team, they came up, they actually wrote down their, their service team values. And these are our service team values. They wrote that up uh, two years ago. Uh, and these are the, really the values they stay for. So uh, make the customer awesome, challenge yourself, all, the, all this stuff. But, and they put that on the poster in the office and say, this is important for us as a team. And then if you walk in day in, day out into the office, these, these values become a little bit blurry. I mean, you see them, yeah, make the customer awesome, next support case, oh, yeah, great. But so they realized that and said, we have to do something. So what they do is actually they, they also come together every, every two weeks and celebrate their cultural rock stars. So people that stood up for their values that say, yeah, and went over and beyond. This is the really thing, the really important for the team. So this is a really, really essential stuff for the team that helps them to focus. Um, so, so they come together, they write a poem maybe for someone, or write a rap song, or take a guitar and, and, and start to sing. Yeah, imagine you are Rick or Jeff and hear that song that somebody sings for you. You feel really, really good afterwards. So really, this, this really helps us. Uh, so, so, so stop and celebrate our small and big wins helps us to, to make us happier, but also helps us to, to focus and say, this is really what we stay for. This is really important for us as a team. All right, how happy are you? Kind of happy here. You are today at J Prime. Not at work today, learn some awesome stuff. Great, we're all happy guys. But what, what about your team? Do you know how happy your team is right now? No. Maybe you don't know. I mean, they can say they are happy, but hmm. So as an organization, how do you find out what, what, how happy your team is? You do stuff like this, freaking surveys. So this is what companies doing. They, they send out surveys to people and say, fill that out once a year, and then we, we can see how happy you are or how, what, what you want to do the next year or what we can improve. Well, we think this sucks and it's, it's also slow. I mean, I can be 11 months unhappy and then my boss won't find out and after, after one year he finds out, oh, didn't know that you were, you were unhappy here. Um, so we said we have to do something. Actually, in a, in a, in a Ship It Day, we developed an app, an, an iPad app, and we called it the Mood app. 
So at every exit at Atlassian, we have now these iPads. And then people saying how happy they are. So they can say, I'm happy, I'm not so happy. And uh, we, can, we can measure, actually, the happiness of, of, of the organization. So we can see things are, things are increasing or things are decreasing, and we have to do something, maybe. Um, so we can, we, can, we can measure the happiness on a, on a daily basis. And of course, after a while, this question got, got boring, so we, we also adopt the question. So we ask, for example, does your manager know what you love and what you don't love to do? So, um, or something like uh, after, after our last uh, end of fiscal year party, the Games of Code party, we had, hey, how happy are you today? And most people felt like the guy on the right-hand side there. Happy, but not so not doing so well. So we open source that, so you can download that. It's on Bitbucket, um, and I I have a link to the slides, so you can you can get the slides afterwards. All right, but Atlassian is not the only company that is doing stuff like that. We also also for example Spotify is doing that, and they did the same stuff, and they found out that 91% of their team, uh, their employees are happy. Great, 91%, good number. Go on. No, they said, what, what, wait, 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 what's with the rest 9%? Why are they not happy? So what they did is actually they talked to the unhappy people. They asked the unhappy people, hey, what can we improve to make you happy? And then they, there were some small things they, they changed, and so they got 94% happy. I mean, you cannot make everyone happy in the company, but 94% is better than 91%. And actually they know why the rest 6% rest, uh, are unhappy. The third thing I want to talk about about culture is about balancing your passion. I mean, we are passionate developers. Why do we code? So I code, I can say that, to create great software. That makes me happy. If I can create great software and I see, oh, this is so good, that, that makes me happy. So what do I need, actually, to create great software? So let's ask the Swedish chef here. Tell us, uh, what, what do we need for great software? Well, first, I need good tooling. Good tools, the best tools that money can buy, or a lot of tools are, uh, are for free, great. Um, I want to have support from the management. So I don't want to, if I say, okay, I have, to, I have to push the deadline two weeks out because I, we cannot really do that, I want to support from management that say, okay, good. Or if I say, um, we, we stick to our 10 people, don't, don't remove people from my team, I want to have support from management. Um, of course, we're talking about culture here, so you need a great culture of respecting and trusting each other. And then you need something like the Swedish chef, passionate developers. I mean, if you know the Swedish chef, he's very passionate. Maybe, maybe too passionate sometimes. And uh, yeah, so I, I would say maybe we add talent to the mix. So talented, passionate developers that really can create great software. So great software. These are my ingredients for, for great software. Why do we code? Because coding, coding makes us happy. But we tend to forget some things. There was a very important ingredient missing, actually, that I showed up, didn't show on the slide. And this is the customer. We create great software to make the customer happy. That makes me happy if my customer is happy and, and says, oh, that's a great, great, great software. I love to use it. That makes me happy. Um, and we, we, we tend to forget, forget the customer sometimes when we talk about should we use a SQL or NoSQL database or which web framework should we use and stuff like that. And we have great stuff, so, uh, customers at Atlassian. So for example, meet Emma. Emma is a great customer of ours. She just started with Confluence. So she just, she just started with it and tries things out. So if we do a new feature in Confluence, we think about, hmm, how will Emma use that feature? How can we make it easier and discoverable for Emma? So, but sad that is, Emma is not our only customer. We also have William, for example. And William, William is a long-time Atlassian tool user. He uses Confluence. He knows Confluence inside out. And also, if we do this feature for Emma, make it right for Emma, maybe we fuck things up for William. So we also have to think about the same feature. How can we make that good for William so William can use that very efficiently? So, but said that is these, they don't exist. They are fake. We made them up. We came up with, with, with those, with those uh, people because we actually use personas. 
They represent customers of ours, so we have different personas, and they all represent customers of ours. So for example, Emma, if we talk about Emma, it's Emma the Eager, so we have this, this card here that talks a little bit about Emma, so we get to know, as developers, get to know Emma a little bit better when we talk about her. We have these, these, these cards here where we also know what she's doing in her a, in a spare time, what, what, what products does she use, and these these scorecards hang ev are everywhere in the uh, Atlassian office, so you, 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 you see them everywhere, so you got reminded every, every, everywhere that these are the customers or the personas we're doing our software for. And you can't really escape from our personas. They are, they are literal everywhere, um, even in the bathrooms. And people come up with, with new personas all the time, so for example, wearing on the voyeurist and stuff like that. Um, but also here, actually, it's the same, same effect that we have with our service team. You see the personas say, yeah, Emma, great, I think about Emma. And you, you, it's, you, you, you realize that on a daily basis, you, you tend to, it, it becomes blurry. So what we recently did is we, we had this, we, we invite, uh, invented this persona cards. So we have small cards with these personas, and we, we have some, some, some questions on it that we can ask when we go on, on, on our feature discovery meetings. Um, and then we, we actually play cards with these personas when we, when we discuss how, which, how can we, how can we uh, solve this problem, and we just discuss this with, with our persona cards. And then we, we argue with the personas, so we put it on walls and argue with the personas. We, we build storylines, actually. So this is a storyline, and visualize the stories for everyone. So there's a big board in the, in the office, and everyone ca that walks by actually can say, ah, Wait, wait, but William would use it differently. I, I think William would use it differently and write on the board so everyone, everyone gets involved in the, in the feature discovery phase. And that makes actually people are passionate about what they're building. So be, be passionate about what you're, what you're doing. I mean, you spend eight hours a day there on your job. You should better be passionate about what you're, what you're, what you're building. Um, and if you do that, if you are passionate about your customers and want to make the right product for your customers, your product will look like this. Woo, shiny, nice. This is your product. Very perfect. Very, very nice. Um, and then your customer comes and says, yeah, we love your product, but this small bug, can you just change it? And you say, yeah, sure. I open my IDE and look at my code, and your code looks like this. Not good, not good, not good. Um, you have forgotten something about balancing your passion. I mean, we are kind of engineers, and we, we have engineers' values, and we should have values. For example, if you see code like this here, um, I've seen that actually in every, every code base that I've been working on, um, but uh, not, not that obvious that like this one, but really, we have this value. Don't write crappy code. Don't do that. Don't write crappy code. Um, and if somebody asks you, well, you can do the shortcut, I know it takes normally one week, yeah, you said that, but if you, you can do that in, in, in two days and hack something for me, say no. Say no if you think this will harm the code at the end. Don't write crappy code, very important engineering value for us. Um, another, another function here, so it's a, it's a for loop, goes over array and yeah, it looks in the zip file, there's an entry. Well, I think this code is fine, it's good. I mean, you, you probably can polish something, but I think it's good. But if you use Java 8, you should use the streams. Looks much better, much nicer. Always find a better solution. Always try to find a better solution. That's another engineering value that, that we have at Atlassian. So, are people from Brazil here, actually? No? Okay, I can show the next slide then. Um, that's okay. <laughs> Yeah, so um, this actually happened. I'm from Germany, so um, this actually happened uh, last summer. Uh, so, so to say it's Brazil, they actually scored one goal more, so it was 7-1 at the end. But anyway, that's not important. The important thing is that all the scorers didn't, didn't fit on the score bar here. Um, so a scroll bar would be a solution, but uh, not, a, not a good one if you work in television. So always, always try and find better ways. And you probably have people in your team that are very passionate, that always knows the best solution. They say, ah, oh, we have to move from Maven 2 to Maven 3. 
because it's better. It's, it's new, shiny, or you move from, from Maven to Gradle because it's better. And you have discussion, long discussion with these people, and they are very, very passionate. And you discuss it day in, day out. And I call them the prima donnas because they love discussions and they love the new stuff. And don't get me wrong, they are very important for the team. But somehow they, put, they should put their passion more into the products which is another engineering value that we have. So if you have these discussions and the code review saying yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, going on discussion, you can't, I can, you can't, I can, um, stop it and say, hey, turn your passion, please turn your passion into, into the product. Very important. So the thing is not what, what our engineering values look like. This was just a few examples that we have. We have more values like this. Um, but the, the important thing is that you write them down so you can refer to them. So if somebody says, oh, you can do that in two days, you said, don't write crappy code. That's a value. Or if you have a long discussion with, with, with your teams and say, hey, come on, we should turn, turn, your, turn our passion into the product. Um, because it's about balancing your passion. So on one hand, good code. On the other hand, we shouldn't forget the customer. Culture of being one team. So talking about team sizes, 12. 12 seems to be a natural team size. I mean, not that I say every team should be 12 people, but it seems to be that back in the Stone Age, when we were hunting the mammoth, we were around 12 people trying to hunt the mammoth. Seems, seems to fit. 150. 150 is Dunbar's number. Um, so Dunbar's number tells us how many stable relationships we can maintain. If companies grow above this one, 150 thing, um, it, th this thing happens, actually. So you don't know each other's name anymore. You don't know what this guy is doing or this girl is doing. You get into silos. And you say, oh, we are the cool guys. These are the not so cool guys. And uh, for example, if you think about the, the legal team and we are cool developers, and we go to the legal team and says, hey, we want to use this open source library. Come on, legal team. Can we do that? The legal team says, nope. Say, oh, these, these legal team, they don't understand us. It's very important for us to use this open source library. We can, we can save a lot of time when we do that. Nope. <sighs> so we, we need to bring people together. So if we think about the legal guy like, like this, Autonomous guy, uh, it's, it, we, we don't know him, we don't know how he looks. It's not, that's, not, that's not really good. Um, but if, if our legal guy, if you know our legal guy looks like this, say, oh well, maybe, maybe it's good. Uh, he's smiling, he looks kind of nice, so maybe I just go to him and, and talk to him and explain him why this open source library is, 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 is good and is important for us. Um, so we do that actually, we bring people together because everyone at Atlassian that starts at Atlassian, in the first week they start, they have to write an introductory blog post. So they have to introduce themselves to the whole company. So they, they write some personal stuff here in this blog post. So this, uh, this was Benjamin. Benjamin is not a legal guy. He's from the design team. Um, but he writes some personal stuff here. He plays guitar. And then you can start discussions, start conversations with, with, with Benjamin. Um, and that makes actually the, the, the company very transparent. And transparency is very important for us as a company. So we share everything. We share our wins, our fails, our decisions, and our questions that we have. For example, our wins. We blog a lot, and so we also blog about when we, when we for example, our design team won a design award. Yeah, great. Tell, tell the company that we, we did a great, in design, we did a great job here. Or, or this. Our fails. So we're doing 20% time, so we can use our 20% of our time on our own projects besides ship it days. Um, and somehow people don't take this time um, on, on various reasons, but that's, that's, that's a failure at Atlassian. So, so somebody asked here, how can we, how can we fix 20% time? And at the same time, uh, sorry, 20% time is broken. And at the same time, we ask, how can we fix that? How can we make that, that better again, that experience? Um, or a question that we have, our, our founder, Scott Farquhar, he, he recently asked, how do you want to see Atlassian in the year 2016? What, how should it look? Please, please, company, tell me. So, and you see, we get 182 answers. And... Um, one of the highest voters' answers was uh, about that we, we, we would try to somehow open source this culture that we have to the, to the whole world so everyone can, can use stuff uh, in our culture. And probably you, you, also, you also do that. You have these um, big meetings 
maybe monthly, we're doing monthly, but maybe you have a half year or something, where the CEO rocks up the stage and tells about how the company is doing and, and stuff like that. We call that all hands at Atlassian. And at the end, they ask, hey, do you have any questions? And um, often, you're a little bit afraid of asking questions. You don't know, is it the right question? Can I ask that? Do I look stupid if I ask those questions? Or will I get fired if I ask this question? So, but at Atlassian, it's actually, we, we have this system where we, before this, this meeting happens, we ask people to submit their questions. So all the questions that we have to our founders that we want to ask, we put in, put in here in conference questions, and then people can upload the questions. And it's actually the, the founders, they have to answer the top 15 questions. So all the top 15 questions that has to be answered by, our, no, no exception here, so that has to be answered by our founders. So, these are the questions. So transparency. Transparency is very important for us. But in order to get to transparency, we, we should know our transparency enemies. So the things that are, are, are destroying our transparency, for example, the telephone. If we discuss things on the telephone, not transparent. If we discuss things in email threads, yeah, it's electronic. We can search that. But it's somewhere buried in somewhere, somebody's inbox, not transparent. Or discussion at the water cooler. Also, not transparent. I mean, if we take discussions and decisions at the water cooler um, or at the coffee table or whatever you use here in, in, in Bulgaria, um, not transparent. So how can we actually be better at transparency? Um, we do that through chat. So we're chatting a lot. And since, since we use chat, my internal emails get down 70%. So 70% less internal emails since I, since I use chat. Every team at Atlassian has its own chat room. So every team has its dedicated chat room where they can discuss their, their stuff. Um, and people are, are really doing that, discussing things in the chat room. So if you're offline for some reason, you're in a meeting, you're traveling, you can go and look at the history, the chat history, and you can see what has been discussed and jump into the conversations right afterwards. Um, and what we also do is we, we have expert chat rooms. So for example, if you have a question to an, to an, to an expert you, and you don't know the name of, of, of this guy or a telephone number, you can jump into the, the chat room and, and ask the question there. So for example, our build engineering team, they have their own chat room where you can, where you can actually ask some, some questions here. Um, so the, the, they, they actually take care of uh, all our, our build uh, servers. Um, and if you have a question here, ask them. You have all the topic experts without knowing them you know that all topic experts are in that, in that room. And then you, we connect to, to systems, so we get actually, if an exception happened on the production system, we get a chat message and we can discuss that. If the build failed, uh, we get a chat message and, and we discuss that. So we connect also our system with our chat rooms. And we can connect actually the whole organization, also cross, cross teams. Um, for example, we recently uh, released HipChat server, so our marketing team wrote a blog post, our engineering team says, yeah, the downloads are ready, our PR team said, uh, yeah, now, now the articles are out, and then we have some Twitter integration, so we're also monitoring Twitter here in the chat room. So cross-team cross uh, communication can happen in chat rooms. Transparency, very important to bring people together at the end. And I can, I can say that, actually. That helps, actually, the whole company, and I'm a remote worker, um, to, be, to, be, to spread the culture, actually, around the globe. We are a very distributed company uh, with various offices around the world. And this, actually, this transparency helps to spread the culture around the world. So let's talk a little bit about uh, scaling. Um, as I said, 300 people when I started, 1,700 now. Um, let's talk about team sizes. I said 12 with the natural team size. Well, I think for programming teams, that's too much. Um, so our programming teams are a little bit around six to eight. Um, that's our engineering teams, um, including Q, uh, QA and people and designers and product managers, so cross-functional teams. So we have, as I said, designers in our teams, for example. But if we don't need the designer for the next sprint or, or right now, we can, we can give him way to another team. So he can move away to another team and help them to kick ass. Uh, because we have, our developers have some design skills and we, we, we are uh, doing some, some lectures to help them to, to develop more design skills. And um, so they can do e uh, easy design tasks. But sometimes maybe you want to uh, have a discussion back and ask the designer, hey, 
how, how can I do that? And uh, you can just connect them and you come back for one day to your team. If you work on a, on a bigger product um, like, like we do, we of course have various teams that works on one product. And you probably have that too. Um, and it, it tend to that, that companies fail into that, that, that you have expert teams. So for example, you have the, the front end experts, experts team that are doing the front, front end, uh, the performance team that cares about performance of your application, and the database team that cares about the database. Well, you run into, run into problems if you do stuff like this. Um, so for example, coordination problems. If you have a feature that runs over all teams, well, you have to coordinate this team, these teams. Or you have missing, missing customer relations. So there is no persona that says, I want an awesome database. There's no persona, so there's no, no relation. Um, and, and people have no motivation to do things great for the customer. So we, 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 we tend to not to do that. We tend not to do that. We actually have theme teams, so that, that cares about a, a specific theme that we have. So for, for example, Confluence has a team that is the easy start team, to get easily started with Confluence. Um, we have a team that cares about enterprises, so mostly performance, yes, uh, and scalability, but also about how do I, how do I visualize 1,000 users in the, in the admin mask? Um, our developer teams cares about the integration between Jira and Confluence um, a lot. And these teams are autonomous. So if you look at that, one team uses tool, tool A, the other team don't use a tool for that at all. That's fine with us. They work autonomous. Um, and then some people have daily stand-ups doing that, and some people just meet when, whenever it's necessary. Um, so they, they work autonomous. autonomous. But if you think about that, maybe sometimes you, you have a team that have maybe have written the, the mobile client and you have no idea about the code base, and, but you have to, have to put in something in the mobile client, so you need some, maybe some support from that team. So what you could do is uh, you could reach out. Go to the, to the um, team manager of, of that team and ask him, hey, can we get support from your team? The team manager says, oh, we're all cool guys. So he says, yeah, cool, yeah, sure. But you have to wait through two sprints. We have now different priorities. <sighs> and I have no time to wait two sprints. So just three words. It's just do it. So we just, we just go on, change the code, do, just, just go, go try and do it. And we call that a duocracy. Our duocracy is actually built on autonomy and trust. But if you, if you scale, um, if, you, if you have so many teams, it can end into chaos. So what we put, well, we, we have to put something that they don't run wild in the wild. Um, so we add actually transparency to the mix. So let me show you how we use transparency to bring, bring everyone on the same page. So for example here, um, our Confluence team has written this spec specification. They wanted to know new page layouts. Um, it's actually the Easy Start team that did that. So they shared the specification with the rest of the Confluence team. So they said, this is what we're planning. Um, please comment on that if you agree or don't agree, or if we have to do something for, for, for bigger teams, so for enterprise teams, so the enterprise team looks at it. Uh, and also, people that have nothing to do with development, they actually comment on that and says, uh, I've just been to a customer, and he would like to have this and this. And then, if you agree on the specification, you're, of course, changing the code. So you have to change other people's code. Well even though there is nothing like other people's code. I mean, we have a collective code ownership. Everyone is responsible. Actually, Spotify calls that internal open source. So you can change everything that what you want. Um, and then, of course, you want to do code reviews that you know that you, you haven't fucked things up in the code base. But said that is, who are actually the best person to review the code? Who's that? Who should I invite, actually, for, for my code reviews? Hmm. We were actually wrote a plugin uh, an add-on for, for, for Stash, uh, our Git repository manager. So if you do a pull request, it automatically suggests reviewers based on if this person has recently changed the file or this person is the original author of the file. You can read that all with Git. Uh, and, and, and you can get the information. So we propose these people to be the reviewers here. Yeah, they're the best people that knows about that. So if you have done the code, obviously, we have created some software. What we actually do is we're doing demos at the end. So every week, we're doing demos um, and show, show the software to the rest of the teams to say, hey, 
This is, this is what we created. And we can actually see if teams are struggling with something, so other teams can say, OK, let, let us help your team to get to, get to done faster. So these, these demos are regular. So each team does it on a different day. And you can, they are open, so you can, you can go to that demo and see what they have done the last week. And they, we, 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 we give honest feedback on, on what, they, what they did. So said that is. We don't have a real big process for all these things. These are all lightweight process. So this, this gives us a lightweight process, being transparent. So everyone can go to a demo, everyone can, can review the code, and everyone can, can comment on the, on the specification. Um, and this helps us to scale, actually, and develop by keeping our development speed. And development speed is very, very important for us. All right. So. I've been talking now for almost 45 minutes, um, and I've been talking about, about this here. So being transparent, autonomy, autonomy and trust, balance your passion, be one team, and have the customer in mind. And now that I've talked for you for 45 minutes uh, and, and asked you, what is culture? It's still that, isn't it? I mean, I've given you a lot of examples of what we do, but it's still fluffy. But it's also alive. Culture changes over time. Um, but what we didn't want to have is actually that, that the culture changes too much in a, in, a, in a bad direction. So we said we want to give it a little bit a direction, a skeleton. So all these things here, transparency, these are all important for us. But people don't remember that. On a, if, 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 if you grow, grow with a static pace, uh, people don't remember that. So transparency, we said, OK, to keep that, to stick that in people's head, we call that open company. No bullshit. Or autonomy and trust. Be the change you seek. Play as a team. Balance your passion and have the customer mind we call don't fuck the customer. And this is actually, these are our values. I mean, a lot of companies have values, but these are really something that, that we take to our heart. This is really important for us. So if you, if you meet an Atlassian somewhere and ask, Tell me your five values. They can say that from the top of their head. They can just say the, these five values, because we use them actually in discussion every day. And, and these values give our culture a bit more stability, even though we are growing at a static pace here. Uh, and we remind people of these values, so they are hanging from the ceiling in the, office, uh, in, the, in the kitchen. So we remind people that these are the really important, it's really important for us as a company. All right. I'll leave you with one more thing. It's not an Atlassian watch that I will announce now, but um, it's actually about Apple. So Steve Jobs, he, he went to stage a few years ago and announced Ping. Ping is a social network built in iTunes for music. Great. That's a great idea. Where's Ping now? It's gone. It's not there anymore. They removed it, actually, from iTunes. So, but I, I'm sure this, this team from Ping, they actually, they, they put their heart and blood into making that awesome, making, making Ping awesome. So, but the truth is, products actually come and go. And also at Atlassian, and we want to be around in, in 50 years, but I'm sure Jira won't be around in 50 years. Maybe we got a brain plug for Jira or something. I have no idea. But... Um, we want to have the company should still be around and should still be the same company around the, the, the same values. So products come and go, but at the end, it's, it's the culture that, that will stay. So this concludes, actually, my talk. Thank you very much. Thanks for attending. It's time for lunch now, so, but I will be here, I don't know, until 3 um, to answer all your questions. So thanks for attending. Thank <laughs> you.